today we are so uh, happy and so lucky and so honored to have uh, with us uh, Professor Raja Mazinah Raja Hussein who is um, from the Instructional and Learning Technologies uh, Sultan Kabus University. So today uh, our webinar is titled Scholarship of Teaching and Learning or SOTEL and um, after the program we hope our participants will be able to reflect on the needs of SOTEL and their own practice as a scholar teacher uh, to be able to describe the dimensions uh, of activities related to teaching and also examine uh, the characteristic and attributes of uh, scholarship of teaching and learning um, and of course um, the last one to uh, examine aspects of uh, own, their, their own teaching and practice uh, teaching practice uh, sorry system, systematically and uh, before we start properly allow me to uh, read a uh, uh, small uh, biodata short biodata of our speaker um, so uh, for those who have known her before uh, you would have known that uh, Prof Raja Mazna or uh, what we uh, what we dearly call her uh, Prof Raja uh, is actually uh, was actually with University of Malaya for uh, 30 years before this and uh, she started her career with the university uh, since 1982 and to give you a bit of context um, I was in kindergarten back then <laughs> so uh, and, she, <laughs> and she's uh, she uh, she left the university as a professor uh, in 2013 before joining UM uh, sorry, joining UUM for a short stint and then uh, now currently working as a professor at uh, Sultan Kabus University, Oman uh, since 2017. Uh, she is an instructional designer and coach with a passion to make things uh, easy for people to learn. Uh, and she also has a vast experience in designing and developing training programs for schools, uh, higher education institutions and um, others. Uh, she also is the event, has been an advocate of a certain or scholarship of teaching and learning to encourage um, teachers and educators in higher education to examine um, their own practice and also to share the teaching that makes learning happen with others. She is interested in helping individuals and institutions develop learning uh, environment that help learners learn and her main research interests are in instructional design uh, technology enhanced learning environment, scholarship of uh, teaching and learning. And of course, uh, with, uh, with EDEC, uh, uh, she is also very instrumental in EDEC. Um, uh, I would say um, uh, Prof Raja is the mother of EDEC. Uh, she is EDEC's founder. Uh, and uh, we are extremely, extremely happy to have her, have her here again. Uh, today to talk to uh, all of you, uh, to us, about um, a subject that she really, really loves, which is uh, scholarship of teaching. So over to you, Prof. Thank you so much, Dr. Zahiruddin. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And I'm going to say good morning and good afternoon because it is morning here in Oman and it's afternoon in Malaysia. I'm very happy to be home I would say home although it's not physically home but when uh, EDEC called me for, for a workshop I'm just like ever willing yes anytime say hey. but again you know being a, a mother and grandmother now, <laughs> it's more like a grandmother of EDEC it's been a long time it was 1977 when we set up the first uh, University of Malaya Learning Improvement Center and then in 2007 we changed the name to EDEC and then another change of name, but keeping ADEC later when the new leadership took over ADEC after I left. And uh, I'm very happy that ADEC is doing very, very well. And they have got good people there and all the interesting uh, workshops that's coming out of ADEC. It's wonderful. Right. Thank you for inviting me back, uh, Dr. Zahir. I hope. I wish we could do this face to face. The last time I visited ADEC was 2019, before the COVID. 
<laughs> rather so that was my summer break i went there for a short workshop and uh, and from then on it has always been uh, i mean I'm, i've been in touch with zura zura is no longer at adec but you know umu sometimes and yeah it's nice to be back right today we we are going to be um just talking about or rather having a conversation about soto i'm sure those of you who are registered here be is because you know what soto is or maybe you think you are doing soto or maybe you are already doing soto because i was asked if you can also uh, have a chat about your practice right now whether you are doing soto or you're not doing soto so thus the uh, the learning outcomes was supposed to be looking at examining the total and your practice also and i suppose uh, this is going to be an introduction workshop so you will not really go deep deep into or rather dive deep into doing total because that will come later i mean the introduction is just to know more why there is a need for total why are we doing total why uh, why total is so important and how and what Soto is all about. Okay, I, I'm going to share my my screen so that um, it's easier for me to to go through with you and tell you more about what we are going to be doing today. And this is my first. All right. Oops. Okay. So um. Just the, this is an introduction, it'll be a brief one. I would like to share with you a little bit about Oman. And if you see the food there, I'm sure we, we can get a lot of this uh, nasi uh, mandi, mandi rice in, in Kuala Lumpur now. And that's a, one mandi rice with lamb and chicken. And the middle picture is the Dao, or rather the very famous boat uh, typical of Oman. And we had a, a stay overnight in the boat just to experience what, what it is. And it was fun. It's a big, big boat that can accommodate a lot of people. And these are the, the people on the right, uh, the, the group of people who went with me on the boat. And we also have the picture of the desert i would say well we can see desert everywhere but oman is also surrounded by not all the way but uh, by water i mean the the sea so we have beautiful sea side and the beaches are beautiful and the one with the palm trees that's a, a resort and also the the sunset so that's just um some stories about oman you can ask me questions if if you want to know more about Oman. Okay, I am going to. This is something that um, I like to to share with you. This is these are my boys or rather my students. They are so beautiful. I mean, they're so fun, very polite people. The Omanis are very polite, very pleasant people, and. I'm just sharing with you what Carlos say. A goal of higher education is for students to become autonomous learners who take responsibility for their own learning progression. So we are looking at developing students who are creative problem solvers, critical thinkers, and autonomous. I mean, th those kind of things that, that we want someone from our discipline who are able to create new knowledge and survive out there and representing our field and i'm teaching instructional technology in oman and this program i would say one of the very few undergraduate programs in the world in fact because most of the time when we when we go to learn about instructional technology it's always at the master's level but we are doing it at, at the bachelor's level However, these people, they will go to school and teach IT, in fact, which is not very, not really using all the, those things that they learn, but we are also developing them to be instructional designers and e-learning 
professionals. So some of them are working as uh, instructional designers also in the industry or colleges. And my question is always, um, how do I know that my teaching is helping my students to learn, to be that autonomous learners that they meant to be? And I'm sure you also have that question, right? So you are always curious about what is it that you are doing that's helping them to learn? Or what is it that you are not doing that's not helping them to, to learn? We always wonder, right, after every semester, and then you, you look at the student's performance, or even before end of semester also, I mean, it's like a few weeks into the semester, so when you have to start chasing the students, and, and when they are not turning in the assignments on time, you start to wonder, what is it that I am not doing? And that's not helping my students to learn because uh, at the end of the day, it's about students learning. So whatever that we do is to help our students to learn. And just, um, just as something from Bloch and Solm Schulman who says that our research has been driven by passion for our students, our disciplines and our profession. So we are all researchers in the universities and we are also teachers. So for some, improving the quality of higher education serves a larger social, political and even moral vision. So by preparing students for creative, strategic engagement with the world, higher education could contribute to the development of a more just and capacious society. So that is our mission, actually, as a university academics, uh, is to make sure that our students, when they leave our program, they're able to contribute to the development of the society. Now, say, saying that, I'm just um, going to just share with you. I'm, I'm sure you have seen this thousands of times and uh, the input, the process and the output and our mission for Malaysian education is to make sure that everybody becomes, or rather the, the output of our system is a balanced and holistic graduates with entrepreneurial mindsets. And they're also job creators. And we have the input, the raw materials, um, students who come from different kinds of background and we put them into our system and we process them, <laughs> we, we make sure there is personalization of students' learning experience, although that's what Shift 9 says. I don't know whether we are capable of doing that or we are successfully doing it also. And also we are thinking about MOOC and blended learning, etc. So to me, SOTL could be the, the driving force. That's why I have the my SOTL there. My there is Malaysian. And just a little bit of uh, history, how uh, SOTL, how we have driven SOTL since 2010. In 2010, I was uh, picked <laughs> rather from the, from among the consortium of heads of teaching and learning, the magnetic to, to lead the SOTL work for ACAT. And it was, we had to develop the training of trainers module for SOTO modules under the under ACAP. And we were driven also by National Higher Education Strategic Plan, the Critical Agenda, Teaching and Learning KPIs. And we are also looking at high impact educational practices and SOTO grants. At that time, we, we managed to to push it through to tell the universities that they put this here, this is how we know that we are working in bringing research into teaching and teaching into research and that kind of thing, that, that research teaching nexus at that time. I mean, we, we have to show evidence that we are bringing research into our teaching and we are also researching on our teaching. So therefore, SOTL grant becomes very important as a critical agenda project project at that time. So we managed to, to I don't know, this is this become a, a top-down thing that every university should put aside 1% of the research grants for SOTO work. So I don't know whether it is still um, implemented now, but then in the 20, between 2012, 2015, at that time when we were doing this, it, it was happening. 
So these are the, as I mentioned just now, the total modules that we developed. And this is one of the training that we completed. It, this was, I, I would say this was like the last SOTO training that we did in 2016, because after that, there was change of leadership in ACAP also. So we were told to just, uh, they're not doing that at ACAP anymore. So every university should be able to by then uh, train their own, because we have trained enough trainers supposedly to be able to carry out the mission of bringing SOTO to, the, to every university. So this was like the training of trainers and it was the, the basic module. We never, we never really moved to the other modules because it, for people to, to develop further into SOTO, as SOTO researchers, they need a few, they need the experience, perhaps a, a couple of years to really work on their skills and so that they, they become more confident to be able to, to move to the next level. And now, like enough from me. Now I would like to get to know everybody. So if, if you can just uh, tell me who you are and what is your experience with SOTO research and what is your expectations of SOTO training? You may also write in the chat, and I, but of course, I would like to hear your voice. Okay, is it possible? Can I hear everyone? Okay, I'm going to see. I can see here. Anyone? Any anybody would like to to start introduce yourself? Oh, they are shy, huh? Come on, um, maybe Doctor Vino, since you you had a chat with me earlier, maybe you would like to tell us what is your experience with SOTA research and what's your expectation? Hi, hi, Prof. Hi, everyone. So my experience, my experience with SOTO research, uh, I'm not quite sure whether I'm in the right track. Um, I think, um, can I consider SOTO as one example, like an action research, like uh, looking at my own teaching and learning strategies, how can I align it so that I'm able to um, gauge students' learning outcomes, provide a best learning experience from them so that at the same time, I also able to evaluate my own teaching learning practices. Um, yeah, so I believe that's one of the way that probably I'm currently doing every semester is looking at the module I'm teaching, students learning, uh, my teaching strategy and enhance it um, better for the subsequent semester mm -hmm. through an action research, I, prob I assume. And it's not just keeping that information, the data and everything to myself, but of course, we need to share the good news with people around, maybe through publications, uh, any other method that I can share um, the outcomes from my class, I believe so. Yeah. Right. So, Wonderful. Mm, so from good. my expectation for SOTO training is uh, probably I would like to know more uh, in terms of, I can't say it's the best practices because everyone have different way of teaching. Um, mm -hmm. They have different audience learners, right? So probably some um, best practices being done by other people. What are the best steps that I can use? You know, all that. Yeah. All right. Wonderful. I mean, you, you are an advanced student here. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, bro. <laughs> Well, yes, action research is one of the methodologies that can be used to do sort of research. That's good. You're on the right track. Yes. Thanks, thanks bro. All right, wonderful. I see here from the from the chat, uh, Shin Rosa Rosaida. Okay, problem. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, you have problem with your microphone. And Shinta, I don't have any experience about sort of my experience. Expectation is I do seek knowledge. Wonderful. That's a good start to always seek knowledge, right? And and uh, yep, 
Yeah, um, I'm Leng Li and I have no experience with SOTO research. This topic is really new for me and would like to get to know more about this and equip myself with the knowledge. Wonderful. Okay, anybody else would like to say anything before we, we move to Hi, the Paul. next? Hi. Hi. Uh, Hi, Assalamualaikum. Uh, my name is Iza Zaina. I'm from Center for Sport and Exercise Sciences. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think this is very new to me. I mean, the 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 terms sotel is new. I mean, I, I my first time hearing it. <laughs> I, we are oh. used to teaching and learning. So you so, are going to go for the, the training. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, usually it's uh, teaching and learning, and and so I think this is this this what uh, I'm interested to to learn today. So uh, you know, uh, getting new things that uh, I can bring back to my faculty and for myself as well. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and how, how how long have you been at the faculty? Um, four years. Four years, okay. Yeah, quite new. <laughs> no, still quite new. Yeah. Quite new. All right, yeah. thank you. Anybody else would like to share beside on? All right, so I'm going to, to move forward now. Oops. Why am I getting stuck? Ah. Um, can I introduce myself? Okay. Yes. Um, yeah. I, I think I got it going. All right. Just uh, now, just here's an overview of the program. I'm sure you have read this in your in the advertisement. No. Was it was this shared with everybody? I don't think so, right? Because I see the, the advertisements, just my face so big and <laughs> just the learning outcomes. All right. Now, the scholarship of teaching and learning involves the process of systematically examining our teaching practice and going public. So, Vino, you, you have done your, uh, you have examined your teaching practice and uh, th did you say that you have published also just now? Or you are in the process of publishing, Dr. Vino? Okay. Now, by going public, our process of teaching and learning can be improved because the idea is we're always looking at ways of, of improving our practice. We always wonder, as I said earlier, did I do the right thing? Did I make my student learn? Did I, you know, did I upset my student? Did I feel upset? I mean, what, you know, that, that kind of thing. I mean, what is it that I am doing that's helping my students to learn? So that's, you always, if you have that question, then you would want to go deeper into examining what you are doing, your teaching practice. It, it, it's kind of a whole movement that I think started about 30 years ago. SOTO was started and people have been studying their practice and not just their practice, but the practice of the department, the faculty, the university, the, the whole discipline. So SOTA requires that we examine our current teaching practice, revise our teaching methods to address the challenge, measure the effectiveness and share them with others. Our research then becomes an object of critical review and evaluation by members of our community who will benefit from our sharing. This workshop will guide you to explore the needs for SOTA and how SOTA can be conducted to advance our growth as scholar teachers. So that is my overview of this uh, workshop. I hope we'll be able to conduct it as a workshop. I know, I mean, it's kind of a little bit awkward doing this online. I wish we can uh, do this face-to-face, -face, but maybe next time. So this is the outcome that I have shared with you to be Hopefully, the, you, you will be able to reflect on the needs for SOTO and your own practice as a scholar teacher. Again, as uh, Vino said that she has done some action research, so she questioned whether that is SOTO. And maybe for some of you, you say that you are new. Okay, Dr. Muhammad here. Salam, this is Muhammad. I'm also new to SOTO. Yes, I would like to. <laughs> okay. You would like to do an original learning research, yes. So that, that curiosity to see how do I examine my practice. So we will look at, um, we'll 
We will look at dimensions of activities related to teaching so that you will know what are some of the things that you are doing and where are you located within the dimensions. And we will also examine social characteristics and attributes and examine briefly maybe one aspect of your own teaching practice systematically. But as I said, this is an introduction, so you won't be able to conduct a full-blown social research, but I will give you the links to the places that you can go to to learn more about SOTL and to carry out your SOTL work. And also, I'm sure there, there are mentors in UM that you can work with to guide you in your SOTL journey. Now, this is the content that we're going to be uh, going through the need for SOTL and your experience with SOTL and what is SOTL, the key elements of SOTL inquiries, SOTL methods to examine teaching practice. So, and this is how we are going to, to do the workshop. We are going to, okay, if you see me looking left because I have another screen so I can see both screen to see what I am looking at because I can't see you on this other screen. <laughs> Right, we, we will do synchronous. We are synchronous right now on Zoom, and there's also as asynchronous on Padlet. And if we can have it in the chat, if suppose go, I'll put in the chat in a while. This is this is the Padlet that I have set, and we will look at the Padlet in a while, and we will work as a community of inquiry, meaning that you are going to work together as a team, as group, because total work is best done in a collaborative manner, in the sense that you, you have other people together with you, or helping you, because when you work alone, it's can be very lonely. And I have also used the 5E model to design this workshop, which means that I will take you through the process of engagement, exploration, explanation, elaboration, and evaluation. So this is what I have in mind, how we are going to carry out the SOTO today. And the workshop today will the first part will be engagement. So engage. So the first, we started late just now. Let me see what time is it? 37. Oh, we are seven minutes behind. Uh, we have done some chat. And you're talking about your experience with SOTL. And I will go into the need for SOTL in a while. And there's also forum. And after that, we will explore. So what is SOTO, you, which means here I'm giving you opportunities to, to explore, to read the dimensions of activities and also to examine the, the DART model. And, and then the next, after that, I will be explaining some of the key elements of SOTO and you will also be able to, to share what your readings, what you found out from the readings in, in this session. Then I will... Uh, let you by 3.40, like that, work on your total research, meaning that you pick one area, one aspect of your um, teaching or your student learning that you would like to improve, to work on. And I am hoping that we can put you in group that is, if you want to work in group, as I say, collaborative work is very important when we're doing social work. And we have also set up groups, uh, for breakout rooms for you to go based on your discipline. And finally, we, I, after you have had maybe less than one hour, maybe one hour the most uh, of planning to, to be able to to sort out what are some of the things that you want to look at and how are you going to do that and you are going to just share with the others about what you are doing and what you would like to be able to do as part of your social work and maybe get feedback from me and from your colleagues here. Okay, and I have 
finally, <laughs> as your assignment, another reflection. And also, I would like you to answer some uh, workshop evaluation. Okay. So any question before we move on to the next session? Any question? What questions do you have for me? Because usually when we ask students any question, they say, oh, okay, give me one question each. No? All right. So we have from the chair. Okay. We have everybody's uh, chat here. All right. I would like to now... Um, go to the oh my goodness I am ha huh. this is hard for me to no 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 okay ah okay how do I get around this the screen. Okay, help. I need to go to the. Oh dear. Uh, My screen is blocked. <laughs> uh, okay, let me just. Uh... Uh, If I can go to the, my padlet first. Okay, this is right. Sorry about that. Uh, my, my screen is blocked by the <laughs> the Zoom page, the, the Zoom or rather the, the tools. So it's up there. Okay, so this is what I was talking about just now. And if you can see the, the link is, let me just type it in the chat here. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. It's already there. So the link is already in the chat and you can click on it. And you can see that on this page, the plan, that's the workshop plan which I have shared with you earlier. And the first 15 minutes was introduction. And, and if you have not done it, you may just want to self-introduce yourself here. That's fine. You can just type in the comment and I think it will go into the page. And the next part is we're going to look at for uh, the, the need for total and you are going to talk about the teaching that makes the learning happen and looking at your teaching practice. Does it promote that kind of good learning? And you're going to share your thoughts with in the forum. So I would like to give like a 10 minutes to, to do this in, in the group. Maybe in the chat, or maybe you, if you want to go into your the the breakout room, it's also fine with me. So we have some time to to reflect on what is it that that makes the learning happen in our teaching. But before that, I'm just going to share with you this presentation, and just quickly so that we can get an idea of what this part is all about. We're going to talk about the need for SOTO. Okay, first I would like you to, to see, uh, to look at the this Andre Sasser. I found this like a month ago online on one of my group, pedagogy group. So this person say that two years ago, I was saying, do you have any question? As I was saying just now, do you have any question? And most of the time, students don't respond to that. Then he said, I switched to what questions do you have? So it made a difference. So it triggers the student to think about what questions do you have? And then today he said he tried, ask me two questions. 
That makes a difference, right? And they did. And those questions led to more questions. So it amazes me that the littlest things have such a big impact. So I would say this is total when you start to question uh, your method so you, and you change it and it, it makes the, the learning better. So here I would like your feedback on what is the teaching that makes learning happen for you? And looking at your teaching practice, does it promote that kind of good learning? Just like what this Andre Sessus said. And maybe you can share your thoughts in the chat and maybe you can write it on the Padlet or anyway, or you can, I mean, I would really love to hear your voice. If you can speak to me, then I won't feel so lonely doing this all by myself. Okay. Anybody would like you have we have like 10 minutes to to do this or maybe even shorter. Anyone Hello, want? assalamualaikum. Alaikum salam. Juaria. Yeah, I'm Juaria. I'm a student from uh, Malay Studies, University of Malaya. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, I just want to sharing maybe the uh, opinion from uh, Prof and all uh, friends, uh, what is the teaching that makes learning happen from my experience when I teach uh, foreign students uh -huh. in university? What makes them happy is about why. If I always keep tell them, I told them what, uh, why, why you learn uh, this language. So, uh why make them happy, make they are very clear why you study, why you learn for this subject. Thank so you. It means that you tell them the relevance of what they are learning to maybe their future life, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Spend. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, anything else that you would like to, to share with us, things that you have done that makes that Learning happen in that group besides telling them why they are learning the language. Any particular strategies that you use that you feel is really helping them to learn? Do I read or anybody else would like to share? Hi, Prof. We know you again. Hi. Yeah, so I think what makes teaching, uh, learning happen, not teaching happen, okay, learning happen is when I involve my students in the process. So when I say mm -hmm. I involve them means um, it's not like a one-way direction where I'm more focused on teacher-centered. So I involve students. That means um, doing more active learning um, activity in the classroom for example very basic thing when this when I start my class the first thing I would do is try to activate their prior knowledge um, mm. like about um, just to recall prior knowledge means what happened in your previous classes right a basic thing mm -hmm. that I, I could do without technology is basically just asking right, basic, right? so because that, we want to know whether they have the gap in the knowledge before you yes. start yes yeah. because I don't want to assume that students come with a zero knowledge or I just want to prepare the mental model so that they're able to accept the new knowledge that I'm going to present to them for that particular topic, the new topic they're going to learn, right? So I think that's one of the way, like, um, rather than jumping into the new topic and assume everybody don't have any background knowledge, you know, um, mm -hmm. I'm just making an assumption. So I think that will encourage students to be more interested to, to explore what's going to happen to these classes. I think active learning, uh, involving them uh, in different phases, I think makes uh, learning sustain uh, for a long time. Yeah. Wonderful. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's always good to, to know what they know already, right, before we start something new. So that shows that you care and you know how to engage them based on what they know already, and you build that bridge to help them build that bridge. Right, and active learning is very, very important if you, if you look at 
engaging the students. If they're not actively learning, we feel that they are not really learning, actually. Anybody else would like to, to share? And thanks, Dr. Bina. Oh, we're very quiet. Okay, anyone else in the group? I need to see. Azura? Oh, yeah. No, Muhammad, Siti Rohana, Rosaida, Azrina. Okay, let's hear somebody from other than education. <laughs> Dr. Azlina, are you from medical? Assalamualaikum, Prof. Asna. Here. Yeah, mm, I don't know if it's correct, but normally, like uh, for what I do, like uh, when I teach the medical students, for instance, I start off by telling them, okay, these are the learning objectives, uh, what we are going to cover today, and then I go on to explain, and then at the end, I summarize, or sometimes if I have the time, I will give a short quiz. So, based on their answer, that will probably tell me a little bit whether they understood. Uh, what uh, has been taught yeah mm -hmm. so any 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 research that you have done related to your technique that you have used uh i i don't know i was gonna ask when you say research what does that mean yeah <laughs> from us now sorry <laughs> i mean asking questions i mean start with looking at what your students are doing i mean and what you are doing is it working out for for the students, is it working out for me? Then you start to, to dig deeper to find out, is it really, maybe you ask them whether they are happy with the method that you are teaching right now, or okay. maybe even do a survey, you can do a big research, small research, okay. inquiry. Would that Asking. be like looking at the, how they, they are surveyed? Because at the end, they normally do a survey on, on our class, uh -huh. right? And I, I normally looked at that as well and see their comments, what worked for them, and then see okay. if there needs anything else, something that they like or something that say, okay, they something that I think may not work for them. Would that be considered as the research? Looking at yeah, a yeah. survey? Well, because you, you find out what is it they like, what is it they don't like, but what do you do with it? Yeah. But that's the next step. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe you may change the way you teach. Yeah. yeah. You may bring in something new into That's the right. teaching. Yeah. The yeah. I, I, I have. Yeah. I have made changes. I know like for many of the students is that they say, okay, they like to have a quiz, which previously I normally don't put, but more recently I have tried to add a little bit of questions. I think they, they like that. That's, yeah, that's a good start. I mean, hmm. that's, that's what it means about we are consciously uh, thinking about their learning yeah. and changing the things that we do. Just like this Andre Sasser, if you look at it, I mean, it's just making small change. It makes a big difference. But sometimes we, we do that. I mean, it doesn't have to be full-blown research. <laughs> this small, small thing that we do and then... And if it works for us and we share with others and the other people also will say, okay, I would like to try that. And then it just kind of, it get, everybody gets infected. Sorry to say that word infected, right? Uh, then it becomes a good practice maybe for the department, for the faculty. And then, then you decided to maybe present it at the conference and even write papers and it becomes total. Okay. Right. And I see thanks here so from, yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, uh, you are saying it makes sense to them and they can relate what they learn to the real world situation. Application is the key. Yeah, I can see here that you are trying to make it their learning experience as authentic as possible. Authentic here. Apply it to the real. Good idea. Anybody else would like to say something? I hear the microphone, whose microphone is that I cannot see there. Anyone? Okay. Let, let, let's, let's move on. Okay. Now, most of us, when we, we join the teaching profession, we are just teaching. We practice teaching and we're just teaching and it's always very private and it's so scary to get anyone to come and look at what we are doing. Does anybody here feel that way? 
No. That, so the first time that we teach, okay, maybe I will teach it the way that I was taught. So we're just teaching. Then we then we attend a deck program, the teaching, the new lecturer's training program, maybe after uh, one week to 10 days of learning about how to teach all, with all the excitement and we go back into our classroom and we say, okay, I'm going to use this theory, I'm going to use that theory, I'm going to bring in this method, that method, these strategies, I'm bringing in the technology, et cetera, et cetera. Then, then you are bringing research into your teaching. So what is research out there? You're bringing into your practice and you're trying it out and you can feel that, okay, this researcher said this work, so therefore I'm going to try it out and see how it works for me. Then, as I said earlier, just now when you start getting everybody infected, which means that once you, you feel more comfortable, you are more less private, you're going to more public, then you start talking to your neighbor about it, your friends about it, then you start forming a group and you say, okay, let's do this together. It becomes... Um, about sharing, then you share at the department, then you share at the college, then, then, as I said just now, then you decided to present it at the conference, at the seminar, and even write papers and publish, then really going public. And when you go public, it means that your peers will review you and others will try out what you have researched, calling it research, and and people just keep building upon that new knowledge. Okay, now, the, the, the concept of scholarly teaching versus SOTO, this is important for us to know. Here, when you talk about scholarly teaching, it's seen as a less formal version of SOTO that stops short of presentation and publication. So many of us do that. I mean, uh, once we, we come back from ADEX training, we try out things, but we do not share with others. We do not present it and we not go public. So we are doing scholarly teaching because we are using the scholarly work from other people, bring it into our practice. So we are improving our practice. And here scholarly teachers engage with the literature on teaching and learning, identify learning problems, carefully assess student learning and seek continually to improve their own teaching effectiveness, but not making it public. So many of you are probably already doing scholarly teaching. So you would like to know more about or go forward with SOTO. So why do we do SOTO? Number one, or importantly, is to improve ourselves and our teaching. So it's about sense of self fulfillment, personal interest, and commitment to being the best instructor one can be. So once you start sharing with other people and other people confirm that, yes, you have done a great job here, we would also like to try it. So you, it, that, it's that feeling good that you feel that, hey, I'm making a difference and I I fulfill my, it's about that, that self-fulfillment. You, you feel good about yourself and you reflect on your teaching. And when, you know, the most important thing in doing subtle is reflection. You reflect on everything that you do. You reflect after you finish the class and you're, you're driving home, you start to, to think about what did I do better? Or sometimes you have a class the next day and you have sleepless night because you wanted to try something new. So you are reflecting on what you are doing. What can you do better all the time? To improve the classroom. So this is where you assess innovations in the classroom and you bring the a new innovation into the classroom or you change the curriculum or the discipline. So this is... A, more looking at no more at individual level you are looking at maybe the department level sometimes you are called into to be in the curriculum development group or whatever i mean just just to to help maybe even quality assurance group so you are looking at working with others 
to improve maybe the department. So, and the next level is to improve the discipline or the education. This is when you start to produce a formal peer-reviewed communication. When you are sharing it with others, because the research that you do on your teaching is about researching on how to teach in your discipline. So if you don't do that, other people are not going to do that for you. So if you are teaching medicine, if you are teaching accountancy, uh, someone like me from education cannot do a research on how to teach accountancy or medicine because you have to be responsible to find out the best pedagogy or methods of teaching your discipline. So, so this is where we improve teaching the program and the college and inform the policy decision. So it is becoming at a higher level, not just at your own level, but in fact, at the discipline level, could be at the program level and even the faculty level. Any question for me so far? Anything that you would like me to, to clarify or you would like to say? Or maybe you are reflecting on yourself right now, on your practice and see where you are. You find yourself here. Anyone? Okay. So quiet. Okay. This is what I uh, was talking about just now at the micro level, that is very individual level, at the meso level, maybe at the department level, macro is faculty level, mega is more outside the university. At, at your discipline level, maybe you have uh, your uh, associations for engineering educators, medical educators, etc. So that is where we can see Sotal is not just at the individual level, but we, we affect every level because we do Sotal. And Sotal is about researching on our practice and improving our discipline, our program, and etc. Okay, any question so far before we move to the next session? Uh, Prof. Mazna, perhaps a quick question. Um, is it a must that we must make our uh, uh, teaching practice public? You're talking about going public, right? Um, okay, if, if you are doing a systematically bringing research into your teaching and practicing it, but you are not sharing with others, which means that you are uh, doing it for your own personal improvement, but you are not sharing with others, which means that other people cannot benefit from your work. Yes, I mean, the answer is yes, I would encourage you to share your practice with others so that others can learn from you. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yes, it does. Because sometimes I was just thinking if we just kind of reflecting on ourselves, yeah, but I guess you are in a way right that how do you know whether whatever changes that we make is actually beneficial, right? If we don't share it with others and get feedback. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, now let's see if... We can. Okay, I think the next thing is we're going to be looking at what is Soto and okay, let me. So now we, we'll, we'll go into, 
we need to learn more about Soto. What is Soto? Just stop me anytime. Okay, and this um, this session you will have activity where you're going to be looking at the DART model and you're also going to do some reading what is SOTL and maybe that would be a good time to get into the group if you would like to. Okay, now what is SOTL? As I said just now, SOTL is a bridge between teaching practice and research. And you see, you do the research on your pedagogy and you improve your discipline. So SOTL is at the middle there. If you see how the discipline, the pedagogy and the research interact. And when you start to, to do research on your teaching, the pedagogy, to improve your teaching and you share it with the others that helps to improve your not just your pedagogy, but also your discipline. So you will find how to teach engineering, how to teach uh, medis medicine, how to teach accountancy, how to teach med all the dif those different disciplines. It's because there are people out there who are researching on the pedagogy or on how to teach that particular discipline. So that is where we are in terms of how important SOTL is. Now, what is SOTL? Okay, as I said earlier, the history was like 30 years ago where Boyer coined the phrase scholarship of teaching. And this is a book if you if you want to look for the book and read more about SOTL. And during this time, in it's, it's always the, in, in higher education, people always say that teach, research is more important than teaching. But Boyer, in his, um, in his attempt to, to bring teaching to the same level as other scholarship, so he said that there are, we, we, we don't just do discipline research or we don't just do, um, integration research and or application research and we also do we should also be doing research on teaching and it should be the same level and he says that uh, why do we do discipline research because we want to teach others we create new knowledge we, we teach others in a sense it, teaching is like everywhere in our work as a scholar so there are many, many attempts to define SOTL. You will read that. I have an article that you, you can read about it in the resources. And it, he said SOTL should be a serious scholarship as rigorous as disciplinary research. So the focus of SOTL most of the time is the relationship between teaching and learning. So we look at the teaching that makes learning happen. And as I said, also, it has to be discipline-based because it helps to develop the discipline in terms of teaching in the discipline, how to teach the discipline. And, and Felton look at it as evidence-based study because we collect evidence of good teaching and good learning that happen in our classroom, if it is a classroom, or even it happened, it happened at the curriculum level, at the department level, college level, etc. So the evidence-based study of teaching and learning, which is focused on student learning, grounded in context, methodologically sound, conducted in partnership with students and publicly disseminated. So that is total. So then you have to start thinking, okay, what evidence do I have to say that my students are learning, or that my teaching is helping my students to learn. So you have to keep thinking along that line. And, and according to Shulman, it is an act of intelligence or artistic creation, which becomes scholarship when it possesses at least three attributes. And Somebody needs to be admitted. Okay. It becomes public 
as I said earlier, where we, where we draw the line between scholarly teaching to scholarship of teaching. Once we open our door and make whatever that we are doing in our classroom public, we are already sharing our practice with others and it becomes an object of critical review and evaluation by members of one's community. So your community here could be the people who are teaching in the same discipline as you are or teaching the same courses as you are teaching. So members of one's community begin to use, build upon and develop those acts of mind and creation. So meaning that they will use it, they will build upon it through research and develop further. So that is scholarship of teaching and learning. And it uses discovery, reflection and evidence-based methods to research effective teaching and student learning. And findings are peer reviewed and publicly disseminated in an ongoing cycle of systematic inquiry into classroom practices, which means that what you have shared with others, others will do research on it, will try it out and keep building upon it. Then you'll have the whole book on how to teach in your discipline. So that becomes a uh, sort of, and it can provide awareness of what is taught and how teaching occurs that can lead to modifications of instructional practices. So when we, when we read about what other people has done and we feel like, hey, I can do this too. So you modify your teaching and maybe your assessment and changes to design of courses. Especially now, I, I had a brief conversation with Dr. Zahir before the beginning of the session, and we talk about assessing students online. That becomes a whole new approach of finding what is the best way to assess students when they are, they are learning online, and we would like them to be assessed online too, or rather they would like that to be assessed online. And... But of course, we are always very wary about uh, what they do online because there are so many challenges. So how do we overcome that challenge? Other people would also like to know how do you overcome the challenges of e-assessment? Okay, like in, in our case, which is, this is not really, I mean, not a research at all, I would say, because when we found there was a great inflation when we had the online teaching for two two years and students are doing too well. So we wanted to find out that we changed. The, they, they still learn online, but we test them face to face. That was last semester. And students didn't like that when we did that because they felt that they have lost their, uh, their, their way in the sense that they cannot ask Mr. Google anymore. They cannot cut and paste. They cannot do that. They have to think on their own. So. That is something that's worth researching, something that we, we are still looking for. What is the best approach to assess students online? So involvement in SOTL inquiries has resulted in increased collaboration because doing SOTL is about collaborating with students, also researching with students and often lead to the co-creation of learning activities and experiences. Because sometimes our students also may have ideas that can help us to, to improve what we are doing. So it's always think of when you do SOTL, you engage your students in that research. So they are co-creating with you. So uh, SOTL is about making our practice transparent. Okay, now this is uh, my question to you. How do you feel? How do you feel about sharing our practice in public? Okay, how often do we talk our peers? We ask our peers to review our practice. Okay, you may write it in the chat or you may share your thoughts with me. This is a... Reflection, because I, if I remember when I was younger, when I started teaching, I really don't want anybody to come and look at what I'm doing because I'm so scared of being judged or I'm scared that I'm not doing the right thing. I mean, that's always that, that fear there. So anybody would like to? If I may, Prof. 
Iza yeah. from uh, Sport Center. Uh, uh, true, because I'm I'm quite junior. I think uh, most of my colleagues uh, have been teaching for years, and and I'm I'm just afraid if if, if my my method is um, is acceptable, and and I don't want to overshadow. <laughs> I mean that that's how I feel. I I don't want to overshadow my seniors. So, oh, wow. I, <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I do uh, informal uh, uh, conversation with my students. Uh, so I, I like to get feedbacks from them. I, I ask from the previous semesters, how do you feel about me teaching this subject? And, and uh, what, what do you want uh, difference in, in my teaching method? So I think uh, uh -huh. in... Uh, in you know, in, informally, uh, I, I did, but I don't want to make it public again. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Malu sikit lah. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. That, that's very interesting, you're right, because you don't want to overshadow, but you have no fear of uh, people judging you, right? But you, you're worried that, you know, they might feel offended or something because you're doing something that is... Yep. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's some students like. That's wonderful. Okay, anybody else would like to to uh, share with me your hello, feeling? Prof. Uh, you hello, friends. Uh, I really uh interested with what uh is um Madam Isa said about overshadow. I'm also like that. Some oh. <laughs> sometimes when I want to share something, I also have uh, some worry to uh, others if I overshadow my seniors, especially. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so uh, how do I feel about sharing our practice in public? Uh, if I can say, uh, I share to social media and when I uh, chat, in the cafe with my colleague uh, uh, before this. Uh, sometimes actually it's very good because when we share, it's something we come up what we feel, what we think in our mind. But mm. it's very different when we share, we talk. I mean, uh, it's something more brainstorming and it have more idea how to teach the student. So, uh, but we have a risk to share to public, uh, especially in social media. But what the what what I want to say is, when we share in Facebook, uh, uh, example, uh, sometimes it's come when we share, and the others positive people they also share another things that may improve our share our practice in teaching right. and learning. That's so I that feel. That's very good. Others' ideas, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you are doing total in that in that sense, yeah. But maybe it's not systematic yet. But you are sharing whatever you are practicing. Are you documenting what you are doing? I'm documenting about a little bit, uh, uh several journal, but uh, never. Uh, I don't have experience in Scopus or <laughs> gen, uh, very high high impact journal, just uh, uh, index journal, common journal like that. Just a little bit. Don't, I mean, don't, don't worry about it. I mean, it's always uh, somewhere. Mm -hmm. You must start somewhere somehow. <laughs> Thank you, Ju. Uh, Thank you. Which, which college are you teaching? I mean, which faculty? Uh, I'm teaching uh, uh, before... Before this, uh, I teach at University of Malaysia Pahang as a language teacher, Malay, mm -hmm. a Malay language teacher for foreign students. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now I'm doing my PhD uh, under a uh, SLAP uh, scholarship in academic Malay studies. And I already yeah. resigned uh, at UMP. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> or continue <laughs> my study. <laughs> You will go back to teaching after this. Yeah, uh, hopefully. I mean. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Ju. Uh, anybody else would like to share? I mean, your, your feeling. I mean, do, do you feel comfortable about sharing or you feel, no, not for me? No? Okay, so you, you, may, you may write in the chat if you feel that you there's something that you would like to express. Okay, now, <laughs> this is what the researchers say about why not share. 
Okay, in many settings, the idea of sharing work on teaching is simply not yet a habit. If it is not a habit, it's very hard to, to share, right? And you feel like, hey, if I share this, it might offend the seniors because they don't even share their work. It should be them who start, right? Not me. I'm a junior. So while it may not be actively resisted, neither is it something academics are comfortable with or actively seek out. So you're not alone. I mean, sharing is always a very uncomfortable thing to do and it's risky. It says, in part, this may be due to the fact that careful examination of one's teaching can be risky. So, for example, we may risk discovering that the course we love to teach and have carefully designed over many semesters is not leading to the outcomes that matter most for students. I mean, that is scary, right? If you share and then somebody say, oh, 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 you, the students are not achieving the learning outcomes, what are you doing? That's, it's a no-no, right? Or we may find that the course we teach with such great pride strikes our colleagues as outdated or missing the mark. So we don't want to be told that you, you are so outdated. So you probably will find that your seniors are not sharing with you maybe because they're still, still using the the same PowerPoint that they, they used 20 years ago when they were teaching you as an undergraduate. I don't know. Yeah, bro, the... and some of my <laughs> uh, colleagues, they, they are still using, uh, when they did the lecture, they are still using the Word format, not uh, PowerPoint. <laughs> oh, okay. So, so they probably struggle with online teaching also then. <laughs> So, I mean, yeah. those, those kind of things. People are so scared to, to let other people help. You know, sometimes you know they need help, but you cannot just go and tell them, yeah, you need help. True. Thanks. Okay, anybody else have any anything to, to say here? Why you're not sharing? Is, it, is this covered or? Okay. Right, just... Just let me know whenever you want to say something. Okay, now we're going to look at the dimensions of uh, activities related to teaching. And this is, uh, as I, I, I put the, the, di the drawing here, the one that I showed earlier, from just teaching to SOTO, for, for you to, to see where you are right now, whether you can place yourself in these dimensions. And this is the dimension, and it is on the Padlet also, if you want to read this article, it is there. So yeah, let's just take a few minutes, five, 10 minutes to, to just examine this and see where you think you are. Are you in the practice of teaching? Or are you sharing about teaching? Are you doing scholarly teaching? Or are you already doing scholarship of teaching? Okay, I'm just going to let you do this and you can go to the Padlet and on the Padlet, there is the, 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 the article here by Kern and Metatal for you to, if you would like to scan it and just see what it says about this uh, different uh, dimensions of teaching activities. Okay, so I give you some time to, to take a look at it.
Okay, um, anyone, anybody would like to just um, share with, with, with me and your colleagues where you see yourself in the dimension? All right, can can I ooh, is it is it okay to call name? Or you guys are not comfortable being called name? Or you can just volunteer if not. Just just quickly and just uh, just a uh, just want to get a quick survey of where you are, where you feel that you are in terms of the, this dimension. You can put it in the chat or you can just uh, talk to me. Anyone? My goodness. Oh my God, we know you are everywhere. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> okay, where, where are you most in the sense that you say you are everywhere, but do you find yourself uh, leaning the most to, to which quadrant? So no, nobody wants to respond. Maybe I can, it's me again? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> no problem. Actually, uh, for all that, uh, I was very impressed with uh, this uh, D-A-R-T I'm very yeah. impressed uh, I tried to understand but what I want to okay. share um, just uh, about uh, like Prof said uh, who want to share that's something I can relate to the practice of teaching um, among uh, my student before this, they always shy and many things they feel in their mind. If I ask uh, what my friends say, if I ask uh, this one, my friend A say what, my friend B say what. So when I in, uh, interview them one by one, because uh, in my class don't have many students, just have 10 person like that. So they said they have many too worried too worried about their friends to asking me and to uh like me to practice their language when i mm -hmm. tell them the phrases the word i say try to speak in malay to practice uh in outside you never have a contact to practice but they say i'm very very shy i'm very very anxiety with my friend because my friend A say what, my friend B say what, my C friend say what, and have a many fa factors, uh, other factors that make them anxiety. Uh, they just want to pass, this is not important for them, this is not my subject, just university subject, for compulsory subject to graduate. And in your, their mind, they might, uh, uh, the wrong mind, I think. <laughs> Same to me when I study and when I student. So I think practice of teaching of what in mind of the student psychological, maybe. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So you are, where do you say you are? Practice of teaching yeah, or you are already doing scholarly teaching? Uh, uh, I think what I Every. say is practice of teaching maybe, I think. Practice of teaching. Yeah. Okay, no problem because it's still private and it's still, you know, informal. Right. So you can always move to the next level and the next level and the next level eventually it's just a matter of uh, trying to understand where we are and what we are doing and where we can place ourselves in this dimension of uh, teaching right okay let's see here um anyway thanks uh, you uh oh <laughs> interesting in the chat uh someone says you're in the dimension of Vino says everywhere. Um, Rosida says I still think in the dimension of uh, I, I think still in the dimension of practice. Yeah. Shinta, so do I realize that I'm still in practice teaching. I'm still baby steps. <laughs> Rosida. <laughs> Yep, lacking in the dimension of SOTA, but need to start working on it and accelerate the process. Ah, okay, wonderful. I mean, it's okay. It's good to know where we where we are and to know where we are going. At least we know what to look forward to, right? So this dimension of teaching will help you to to set yourself a target where you would like to be. Let's say you want to start sharing with others. Maybe you can start small, maybe with the people in this group, people who are attending this workshop, maybe keep uh, in touch with everybody and then you have a group and then you can start sharing what you are doing. And then later maybe uh, you find something in common that you can start a research together in your classroom, in the other person's classroom, in another person's classroom, and then at the end of it, sit together and just say, hey, look, I think this is something that we, we find similarities and differences in our practice, and maybe we can share it uh, in a seminar or conference. There are so many teaching and learning conferences every year, and I think this is something good to aim for. And of course, once you start looking at your teaching systematically, you would like to know what is the literature out there, what are, what other people have said, what other people have done so that you can see where you are in relationship to the other work that is already out there, then uh, you can do your scholarship of teaching. All right, we're going to move on. Thank you, guys. Um, Okay, now this is something that is, um, I'm sure is not done regularly and some, unless someone asks for it, like in our case, in my department, every, by the end of the semester, we, we are supposed to, to put all the, whatever that we have done in that course into this, uh, portfolio. So we have a portfolio for all the courses that we teach in that department for that particular semester. So we have, of course, we have our syllabus and we have the activities that we do, the assignments that students do, sample tests, sample uh, students who work, sample whatever, and alignment. Uh, our program is accred accredited by Kate, so we have to show the alignment of uh, our teaching and learning uh, activities, uh, learning outcomes, program outcomes, etc., with the accre accreditation body. And we also have to write a reflection to put in the portfolio. Now, over to you. So you may want to, to look at, uh, or rather to answer these questions, uh, reflecting on what you have done how often do you document your teaching? 
What type of documents and activities have you collected as evidence of your teaching? And what did you do with the documents and activities you have collected? So this question is important, especially if you are going for the teaching award. You will have to build your portfolio based on the documents that you, you have. And also maybe even promotion. You may have to show evidence that you are a good teacher or scholarly teacher. So this, um, you uh, you will find the dimensions in the Padlet. So it is um, or documenting. Uh, oops, under here, sorry. It's under here, documenting your teaching. If you can take a look at it. What is it about documenting your teaching or documenting evidence of effective teaching? Because sometimes you you want to go for promotion, but you don't know what to put together in your portfolio, maybe, or you want to go for award, teaching award, and you're not sure. So this is some of the things that uh, you can do to document your teaching. So things like your teaching philosophy, do you have that or you you don't have yet and you would like to build that? And I'm sure Edek can help you to, to build your teaching philosophy. Uh, the teaching materials that and forms of assessment that you collect, as I said, just now it, what we do in our department, we put the assessments there and the rubrics and everything that goes with, with it. And... In terms of directing undergraduate and graduate student projects, internship, thesis, and dissertation, what evidence do you have to, to say that you are doing all that? Advising and mentoring students, uh, course and curriculum development, and what else? There's a whole lot here. Commitment to advising, a contribution to professional organizations, Involvement in international programs, award and honors, recognizing teaching service on teaching uh, committees, web articles, blogs. Uh, do you have done your, your social media? That's something good to, to keep. Editor review, teaching presentation, publication, evidence of professional development. And from your colleagues, your peer evaluation of your teaching. I'm sure you do this yearly. Uh, formative observation of teaching center for teaching and learning, I suppose here. Maybe EDEC can come and observe your teaching and uh, have a formative observation. Receive teaching awards, yeah. Invited to participate in teaching presentation, publication, use and or review your textbook for teaching materials and citation of your SOTO work. Okay, and also you, you get evidence from students, students and of course rating. I'm sure you, you guys have collected that. Evidence of student learning, okay, course-related student artifacts, their papers, exam uh, projects that they have done, mid-course student evaluation. Okay, some people do a mid-course student evaluation to find out what is it that you would like to continue, your, st your students like about your teaching that they want you to continue doing, to stop doing, or to start something new. Unsolicited feedback from students. Sometimes you get unsolicited feedback from students. As I last um, last year, I remember after the midterm exam, I I have a WhatsApp group for the students, and a few of them just send me a message. That was like the best midterm exam that we had. It was really interesting. It was fantastic. Blah 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 blah. Say so, whoa, that was unsolicited. So if you have some things like that, keep that in your portfolio so that, you, that those becomes evidence of uh, your student learning in the sense that, or rather that testimony that they are learning and evidence of student achievement, job and career placement, letter from employee, etc. Okay, so these are some of the things that you could do to document your teaching. That's a good place to start when you are looking at doing SOTO, right? Oh, 
Okay, so we are still. Oops. Nope, that's a wrong one. Sorry. Okay, any, any feedback on this? Anybody would like to, to say something about it? Anything that triggers your curiosity <laughs> about documenting your evidence of teaching? Because doing total is about collecting evidence. And if you don't have that evidence yet, Always uh, go back to that document and see what you can do to, to improve what you are doing. Because I know when it comes to promotion, you probably have to, to show evidence that you are a good teacher, you are a good researcher, and you, are a good, you, you have good service that you have provided, good service to the university. <laughs> yes, Ashinta. May I ask something? Would you mind to give an information about the criteria or indicator of good teacher? Please, is it necessary from the evaluation from colleagues, students, etc.? Oh, yeah. I mean, if I, I think these documents that I shared with you just now is will provide you enough evidence to, to show that you are a good teacher. Because it's not enough just for you to say, yeah, I'm a good teacher, or the students to say, yeah, you're a good teacher. But if you cannot provide the evidence to show that you're a good teacher, then it's very hard to, to believe. That's why, I mean, if you feel that you are a good teacher and you have enough evidence that you have collected, then you may go to, into the teaching award. I think we have yearly teaching award. Do we still have that? Because I remember when I was there before, we still have that teaching award. Um, it's, I don't know. I do feel not as good as others. Yeah, sometimes I mean, you, you can use these uh, documents that, uh, that I shared with you as, as a criteria to, to show that you are a good teacher. And of course, I mean, it, it's not just uh, you yourself producing those evidence, but also it helps to have your colleagues also testifying for you to say that, yes, you are an effective teacher and also your students. And I do make a habit of every semester when I finish the course, I will send them a survey and I call it self-evaluation survey. I I wanted the student to assess their own learning because if I know about their learning, then I will know about my teaching in a way because I would ask them about what else, the, which activity did you find very effective, etc. And they will write about the activity and those kind of things. Then you will go back to see, okay, then you can see, okay, yeah, the activities that I did with them has helped them to, to learn based on what they, has, they have testified or what evidence that they have given to you. And also evidence of the work that they present to you. That's why you, you need to keep your students' work also. Just uh, put it in your portfolio to, to show that these are the things that the students uh, have done. And especially if you have help them like you, you have given them the work and you give them feedback and they improve on it. So keep those as evidence to show that you are working very hard to help them to in their learning. Okay. So that, that's the answer to your question, Shinta. Anyone else has something to, to say here? Yes, thank you very much, Professor. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, I think you, you can also get the criteria for, for the teaching award, especially from the A, A, uh, uh, Anugrah Academy Nagara, AAN. The website will have that. And you can see what is it that they are evaluating you to say that you, you are an excellent teacher. Yeah. Okay. No one else want to 
just just say just tell me what kind of documents are you collecting so far and what did you do with the documents anyone don't be scared of sharing we're not judging you here uh we know yeah so what I do is uh, usually I collect the artifacts from students learning. Usually I engage students uh, like are uh, they creating like a videos, their wikis, their forum mm -hmm. discussion. These are some things that I use to keep as a screenshot. And of yeah. course, I get their concern as well, just in case I need to use it for publication or anything, right? Yeah, these yeah. are the kind of things that I use uh, as a part of artifacts as a, as a learning evidence from my students uh, to see that what they have done uh, besides collecting their self-assessment, self-evaluating about certain classes and all that. Mm -hmm. um, I think now evidence is quite easy to keep since most of our classes are online, so it's all are recorded. So sometimes we can really watch again and see that which part we are not doing very well, what we can do to improve it more better and something like that. Yeah, I mm -hmm. think these are some things that we've been doing so far. Yeah, like you said, there are a lot of things that we actually can collect and keep it as a learning portfolio. We can do the e-learning, uh, I mean, e-portfolios, right? There are a lot of applications yeah. available online. We can keep I and know. share with other colleagues who are interested, probably teaching the same subject with us, uh, I mean, taking over for the subsequent semesters. They can always refer back to the materials, previous students' work, um, assessments, uh, everything, so that it can be a guide for them as well, I believe, yeah. And that's why we, we keep that portfolio for our department so that if we leave, someone else can take over the course and it's all there. And especially things are online right now, so all the materials and resources, so whatever it is, is on. For me, it's on my Moodle page and they can just go to that course. It's, everything is there. In a sense, yeah. And I do give my students e-portfolio as their assessment, one of the assessments that I give the students. So it's good to, to keep their e-portfolio because they have evidence of their learning and that evidence will become evidence of your teaching. In a sense, yeah. Mm, yeah, right, <laughs> Prof. I agree with you. Bro. Right. Anybody else want to say something? Yeah, I am uh, agree with you, Prof. Uh, E-portfolio e -portfolio is just easy and completed document. Yeah. Like link block. Right, right. So do you have all your students doing e-portfolio? Yeah, we, we do week site. Mm -hmm. And all oh, yeah. of the uh, audio, videos, uh, report and yeah. uh, interview so all that's in the week side right and i also always like tell them to introduce the artifact that you are putting in there so that you can tell people that this is an evidence of my competency in whatever it is that they are trying to show case in their portfolio yeah all right so thank you so much and no other comments Okay, now, a little bit more lecture here. Um, SOTO has within it a bias yeah, toward innovation. So it, some of you are already saying, mentioning new things that you're bringing to the classroom. And you look at it as innovation, especially when we are teaching online. There are so many things that we are learning that we, and we are bringing it into our teaching so often toward more active roles of students i put here t-shaped we'll talk a little bit more about t-shaped graduates just like our entrepreneurial holistic entrepreneurial uh, students or graduates and that engage them more meaningfully in the content ways of knowing and forms of practice that characterize our field so it's like if you are a teacher you can see from far that that's your graduate he's a he walks like a teacher, he talks like a teacher, He's, he has that disposition so, as a teacher. Now, this is the T-shaped um, model of students that we say that we want. This is a very new article that I found. And th this person was talking about Soto is the central, is, to me, it looks like a heart or the nerve center that 
linked to all parts of the uh, student that you want or the things that you want in your students like critical thinking, global, uh, global citizen, they are good, teamwork, communication, problem solving, all the 21st century skills. And vertically, they, uh, they have the knowledge, the academic skills, the inquiry and the scholarship. So if we look back at our uh, program learning outcomes, we will find that what we have written can be put in this T-shaped format. So, so for the people who are deep into SOTL, they see that SOTL is being conceptualized as an integral part of developing the T-shaped student. And so if you remember earlier when I shared with you the, the Malaysian blueprint and I put SOTL at the middle because I see that as something that is integral to developing that entrepreneurial holistic graduate or holistic entrepreneurial graduate. That's what it is. So this learner-centered approach is a key strength of SOTL because we start with the learner, with the learning. What is it that we want the students to learn and why are they not learning and how are they not learning, etc., etc. And we change the way we do things to accommodate and to make sure that learning happens. So the learner-centered approach is a key strength of SOTO and central to creating these T-shaped learners and building a T-shaped community. So what are we doing to develop this type of learner? So we have to ask ourselves, are we, are we looking at it from the perspective of the department, of the discipline? Are we together, are we in a community that is working towards developing this kind of graduate. So that is something that, I mean, I always wish that, you know, SOTO is a, should be a community thing. So, so if, let's say there are four of you from medical today, you go back and you work together as a community here and your conversation is about building your student learning, helping them to learn. So that we create the community and the community will expand and will bring in others into it when you can show evidence of social work that helps to develop the students. Like in my department here, I have a, I have a social grant. I have a grant uh, by the it's a national grant and I have like um, no, six of us, six or seven of us that we meet like almost like weekly. We talk about SOTO, we share our SOTO work, we, we write together, we, you know, it's always there is a conversation going on. It becomes a, always a SOTO conversation and we have a group of people that we can vent our frustration in the sense that we are so frustrated with how the students work was and we just, we have this group and we talk about it. So it, it's something good to have in your own uh, department to build that community. So, any any input there from you? Yeah, Rosaida, what is significant about T? Why not I or another letter? <laughs> so, Rosaida, if you see the 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 uh, across. <coughs> So the vertical is what we always have. We, we tend to, to train our students in the knowledge, in the, in the academic skills, inquiry, scholarship of our discipline. But we sometimes we forget that they also need to develop that critical thinking, problem solving, being good team members, being global citizens. So that's why it put that across because it's just not, it's something that is not <clears throat> something that we do on the side. Not, you see, when, when we write our learning outcome, it's always about the knowledge that we want, the skill that we day want. But we forget that to include, to develop this other, this like critical thinking, problem solving, we, but we consciously do that in our teaching. Uh, practice in our strategies like we put them in group because we want them to be able to to develop that teamwork skill and we pose problems to them because we want them to be able to 
to think critically about the problem and to find solutions. And we want them to be creative. We want to, to put them together so that they can communicate, they can learn to communicate, they can learn to talk. But most of the time that is not in our learning outcomes. So we have to, <coughs> to be aware that these are also important, then it will become, so thus, if we say holistic student, which means that they have the whole thing. Sorry. <coughs> Does it answer your question? It would be interesting. I mean, you can. <coughs> yeah. Higher order thinking, critical thinking, all the hot thing is there. Right, because I remember when I when I give my student, um, <coughs> it was one time I, after they have done their presentation, what I say to them is I want you to, in your group, <coughs> look at these nine presentations that your friends have given, the other groups have given. So I want you to doodle, do a doodle. I brought color pencils. I brought the... Um, the art block, and I just say, okay, you do a doodle, you use this color, you, you show the relationship between all these nine topics that were presented in class. So I forced them to do that. And after that, I asked them to write a reflection on their experience of doing that doodling and working in the group, doing the presentation, all that thing. And many of them say that it helps us to, to communicate with our friends because they need to, to really and to discuss what is the best way to represent this relationship given that there are nine different presentations. It's a lot of work. And they have to do communication. That It's critical thinking to come up with the, with the doodle. It's not easy. And they have to be also creative to represent it, not in words, but in pictures. So how do you do that? So they, they have to really work together, teamwork. So therefore, it's some, um, yeah. And it, it's always good to, <coughs> when, you, when you do something with the students, when, when they finish an activity, it's good to ask them to write a reflection on that activity then you can really understand how far the students have learned in the sense that have they really uh, been able to, to think critically and how deep is their thinking and their relationship with the other students in their group. Yeah. Okay, the T represents how you're thinking. I see this sort of topic does feel heavy to me. Uh, <laughs> Um, <clears throat> no, I wouldn't call it heavy in the sense. It's about awareness that what we are doing has to lead to student learning. And what is it that we want the student learning? When we talk about student-centered learning, it's always about student-centered learning, outcome-based education, all those things. But what is it that we are doing to, to make sure that the students come out of our program with all this knowledge and skills and whatever things that we want them to, to be. We can talk about 21st century skills, but how do we implement that in our class? So that is the where we start social work, looking at the students, what is it? And if we feel that, um, say for example, looking at this T-shaped student and we feel that our students are not thinking critically. So what can we do about it? So that's a good start. So you have to start reading about literature on critical thinking, how to make students think cr critically, and what strategies to use, what techniques to use. <coughs> then you redesign your course or your assignments to make sure that critical thinking happen. And then you measure after maybe before, before you know already why you see your students are not doing critical thinking because blah, 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 blah. You collected evidence that they are not thinking critically. And then when you change your 
your techniques, your strategies, you bring in the scholarly uh, <laughs> articles or you read about research in this area and then you change, you make the change in the activities or the assignment that you give the students and you measure it again at the end of it, you collect evidence to show that yes, now my students are thinking critically, is it because of what I did? And you can ask the students also about it to the testimony from them to, to, to tell you whether what you have given to them is helping them to think critically. So yeah, Rosaida, yes, we should make this sort of a habit, as you said. I mean, again, it, it's, it's even for me also, I every semester I I make changes to what I do and I collect evidence, but analyzing it and publishing it is something that is always, uh, I find it, I don't have the, 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 the time is always my enemy because I want to sit down and I want to really uh, write about it. But I, what I could do very quickly, if somebody asked me to talk about what I, yes, I can do it very quickly. I can pull together a presentation to show evidence. Yes, this is what I did and this is how it has worked out but to write it out that becomes a challenge if you feel that it's a challenge yes it is a challenge so you, you may that's why i say it, it's always good to to work with in a team where you have people who are good in writing maybe people who are good in statistics your team make sure your team can work together. You don't have just a team that is all uh, creative thinkers, so all the ideas and you try it out and but nothing it came out as a publication. Uh, that will be a tough bit. So if you have a team that you can work together, please, it's good to, to, to find the strength in your team. Okay. So, any questions and anything that from this presentation? Okay. Right, we're going to move to the next one. I think we will we'll take a, a break for 10, 10 minutes, if that's okay with you. Then uh, we will, when we come back, we will do the we look at the total methods and and while maybe you may want to explore some of the readings oops sorry let's go here first <coughs> maybe you want to just uh, take a look at Defining SOTL here quickly and how people have defined SOTL. And there is a video there. And when we, and after that, we we are going to do SOTL. I think we have another uh, 12, we should finish about one hour. Okay, so I'm taking more time right now. It's okay, we are having conversation, as I said, because these resources that I'm leaving with you is something that you can look at it later asynchronously <laughs> okay so let, let's take a ten, 10 minutes break and if you don't want to take a break that's fine you can move on to the doing total and just take a look at uh, some of the uh, how you're going to start the total these are the questions that you may ask and you also have some website here that I'm giving you and these are the infographic on the steps to SOTL and that's it and this is also an example of my SOTL work one of the publications that I did a few years back okay so five minutes break well, welcome back everyone if you are still here with me All right, thank you. Thank you for being here. We're going to move to the next uh, 
we're going to look at how we can do SOTL. It's just like, as I said, I mean, doing SOTL would take longer than just uh, one hour to, to do it, but I have got uh, resources for you to, to work on for those of you who are good at learning independently, you will find the materials are easy to to follow. But first, I would like to just uh, share with you some of the uh, important points to, to remember when we are doing SOTO, some of the methods that we can use. Okay, I'm going to start with SOTO how. How do we do SOTO? And it starts with questions of student learning. I think we have mentioned this. This is more like a summary of what we have been talking about the last two hours. Always questioning our student learning. Why are they not learning? Why are they learning? Why are they learning so well? What is it that we do that makes them learn so well? And requires systematic, disciplined inquiry. Discipline here meaning that we need to start by thinking about what is the problem that we are trying to, to work with what and what kind of research questions uh, can we raise from it and what does the literature say about the issues that we are working with and what are some of the things that we can do differently and what kind of uh, evidence can we collect and we collect the evidence etc etc so it's just like planned before the beginning of the semester and most of the time we after we have taught that, that semester, we know that there's something is uh, it's needing improvement. There's something that we can do differently, something that we can um, redesign perhaps uh, our course or our activities, our assessment, etc., etc. So, <clears throat> and our total would result in products that can be shared with others and used in subsequent research and future applications, which means that the outcomes of what our total work will be uh, will lead to another research and further research and future application. So the basic idea is that teacher researchers raise questions about what they think and observe their teaching and their students' learning. Okay, so this is where we say about reflection. You're always reflecting. What is it that I do today that makes the students love this activity, for example? What is it that I do that makes them produce such great products? And we also see student work as data to analyze in order to examine the teaching and learning that produced it. So if you are in the habit of uh, collecting students' portfolio, there's like there's so much evidence there that we can use to, to show that, yes, the learning is happening there or has happened. And we can talk about it based on what we see from student work. And again, you ask what is your questions. I'm bringing back this Andre Sasser. So he asked the question uh, like two years ago. I was saying, do you have any question? So last year I switched to what question do you have? So meaning that he is himself asking a research question here. What is the best question to ask my students? So maybe, uh, and today he said, I tried ask me two questions. So he is looking at ways that he can change the way he asks his students questions. What are the quest what are the maybe the best way to ask students to talk to me probably. And they did. And this question lead to more questions and he said the littlest things have such a big impact. That's what we do also in our teaching. We don't ask big questions immediately. We look at small, small questions that lead to the big impact. Okay, as I said, reflections, maybe you want to start from Gibbs reflective cycle. You can start by looking at description. You describe what happened 
keep it relevant to the point necessary the background information so it, you, this is where you 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 may want to pen down your reflection also not just thinking about it as i say my my department we we write i mean just one reflection for every course but you can write more that i mean you can always uh, uh, after you finish your class and you feel that oh wow it went very well i mean so you may want to describe what happened why do you feel that it, it went so well and your feelings and how did you feel and what were you thinking at the time looking back i mean what were you thinking why did you give them that activity i mean what what how what kind of scaffolding did you use to support that learning that makes them feel that it was so much fun as i said the the doodling activity they had so much fun and they they felt like they were laughing and giggling and doing because it, it's fun to try to draw something especially when most of them say that i'm i'm so bad at drawing but they figure out ways to do it some of them were copying from the screen putting the paper on the screen and just copying the the drawing that they 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 saw on the internet so whatever i mean just but they were having fun so your feelings and i i felt very good about it and as i was going from group to group and i was just enjoying myself as much as they enjoyed themselves and if all evaluation how did things go good or bad a reaction from yourself and others involved so this is where you you ask the students for feedback and how do you feel about this and you also ask yourself how do you feel about it and, I, and of course i felt very good about that activity when i gave it to the student then i went back down and i just penned down the things i did so next time when i taught the course again i used the same activity but i had more structured I, I have more steps so that I can share my steps with my colleagues because they were all remember I said I have a total committee everyone was interested in what I was doing and I presented to them I shared with them the drawings etc and they wanted to know so I put it down in a more systematic way so that it can be replicated by my colleagues so analysis so what sense can you make of the situation what might have helped what might have hindered okay what helped to me was i gave them the the freedom to to start with that assignment i gave them the freedom to choose the topic we brainstormed the topics together and then they had the choice to which group take which topic so it was their choice and they had the voice because they had the opportunity to 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 discuss it and why that topic is important etc etc and then i also i and i facilitate that that learning in the sense that when i say put them together first we we i mean i showed them example of how we can link things together how this link this topic link to the other topic etc and then um to to make it easy for them i gave them an advance notice told them that if you can bring next week we're going to do doodles we're going to be drawing bring your pencil color pencil bring whatever i'll bring the paper i also bring color pencil so they got excited they were looking forward to to that okay and what may have hindered was the time we had only like one one and a half hours of class meeting and and they felt that um, they couldn't finish the drawing so but of course i allowed them to take it back with them and finish it and bring it back to me the week after so that they can present it to the class so after we did that activity we put it on the wall we paste on the wall the drawings then we we do the walk uh, <laughs> to every drawing and they had to explain what their drawings were and it was a very engaging very involved when and they enjoy that and of course after that i asked them to write the reflection so conclusion um what else could you have done what you what you have learned and what can you change in the future okay i when i when i taught the class last semester last year it was online so i wanted to replicate the the activity but it was not easy to do that so i changed the activity although the same activity they do the presentation group presentation but what i asked them to do is just uh, 
in their midterm, I told them, I'm going to ask you in, in the midterm, this is what the question I'm going to ask you. I want you to look at three more presentations, I mean, just to go and prepare yourself, because I'm going to ask you about, about that, how it relates, and I want you to draw also. It's still drawing. So they did their drawing during the midterm, individually. It wasn't in a group. So it was a different uh, effect, but you, you can see some, some students did very well, and some who did not uh, really pay that much attention, some, not all of them pay attention anyway. So they didn't do so well. So I am uh, teaching that course again this semester and it's online. So I have to think about, uh, they have done the presentation, what I'm going to do next so that they can connect that presentation. It's very important for me, for them, that, that connections between the, the topics that, they, that were presented. Right, action plan. If the situation arise again, what would you do? Anything you need to know or improve. So that's what I, I say that already. So this is something that you can start with when you are thinking about uh, to start your total work. What is it that needs to be changed that you would like to change or you would like to bring or introduce to your class? Okay. Now, here is the question for you to, to think. So that at the end of this uh, presentation, you can uh, maybe work in a group. There is uh, also the, the group that I that ADEC has set up for you to go in as a group. And what is one thing that you would like to continue doing, stop doing or start doing in your current teaching? As I said, I still wanted to continue doing that assignment. But because I am doing it online, so I'm going to do it differently. Currently, okay, maybe stop doing. I cannot have the students draw face to face and get together, sit down and do the drawing. So I miss that part because that that situation you can really see how the fun is driving that learning. And start doing in your current teaching. That's something that you have to think also. What is it that you would like to start doing? And in fact, you you could ask your students if for me right now this is our week five. Maybe at the end of week five, you can give them, uh, ask them for, for their feedback and ask them, what is it that you would like me to continue doing? What is it that you would like me to stop doing? Or what is it that you would like me to start doing in, your, in this class? So they will be able to give you answers to that question. So if you feel that you are not sure, what is it that you would like to, to change? Ask the students because they are your partners. Does it present a challenge? Okay, so you may want to, to think of a relevant research question. Okay, like for me, I, how do students uh, learn uh, evaluation using through doodling exercise? Because I teach evaluation. So that could be one question. Okay. What's one possible strategy for addressing this issue? I mean, meaning that how are you going to collect your data in the sense that, or how are you going to carry out this intervention? You can call it intervention. If you're doing action research, it becomes an intervention that you keep going in one cycle and another cycle until you get it refined. How would you measure the effectiveness of your strategy or survival research design? Okay. Um, <clears throat> asking your asking research question. I think we are all researchers here. We know how to write research questions and maybe asking a research question in a sort of research may not be that much different from what you have you are familiar with so what is it that you want to learn about the student experience or student learning in your course or program maybe you want to learn whether they are capable of critical thinking problem solving or maybe you just want to take that t-shaped graduates and see where your students are in terms of developing that dispositions Okay, what is motivating you to ask this question and what is the context of your question? Okay, is it at the level of your course, your one particular topic, or just throughout the semesters or whatever? 
Okay, it is recommended that, that your inquiry question be specific rather than general and that the question clearly link with the proposed intervention. As I said just now, how does Doodle help my students to develop critical thinking? Maybe I have a proposed intervention already. I wanted to do a Doodle exercise because I believe that Doodle, do, by Doodling, help them to develop teamwork help them to develop communication skills, help them to develop critical thinking, all those things that the uh, researchers see out there. So I bring in the literature to help me to write my question. So what do we already know in our discipline or from other disciplines? Okay, this is where literature comes into play. So it is important to survey the field before beginning an inquiry. See, for example, as I, I was doing doodles, so I wanted to know how doodling helped and what are the strategies that people use when they bring doodle into their classroom. So those kind of things. So that becomes important for me. And what does the literature say about how others have dealt with your question, learning outcomes and related issues? So again, you may want to look at literature in your discipline or literature from education. Okay. So does the literature suggest validated methods or strategies? So this is where you need to do a lot of reading before you decide on how you're going to carry out the intervention and to collect your data, just like normal discipline research. Okay, you and then you design and implement the study. Uh, primary rule of SOTA is to use your discipline-based methods first. I mean, if you are coming from... Uh, the quantitative uh, background, use that first. I mean, don't, don't worry about collecting qualitative data because you may not be familiar. But if you have someone in your team who is familiar with qualitative methods, so that would be good. Then you may want to look at it from the perspective of mixed methodology. Maybe you collect some survey and, and then you... Uh, talk to the students and you look at the e-portfolio and do content analysis, all those things. So uh, that requires um, some skills to, to do that. So most of the articles use a combination of quantitative and qualitative methods. So if you think that you're going to publish it, so make sure that your, your methodology is uh, very clear and reliable and valid, I mean, whatever that you are, data that you are collecting, you are following the certain format of making sure that the method is sound. Okay, so meaningful SOTO involves many approaches that action research, as Vino said that she used that, and maybe you may want to connect with Vino on on action research. You may want to learn more about action research from her. Uh, maybe case study, quasi-experimental study, phenomenological study, control study, etc., etc. So again, it depends on what you are familiar with. So don't don't get don't be so worried that you you have to use a specific methodology. No, not really. And again, if you are doing a quantitative collecting quantitative data, you may use scales, test, Likert survey, etc. And student grades also becomes very important. You may look at the grades before the intervention and maybe look at the grades after the intervention and you may just say, hey, maybe it is because of what you, you did. And of course, you need other evidence to also support that conclusion. Okay, for qualitative data, you may want to interview, observe, re do reflections, open-ended questions and focus groups. All right, so in summary, you can ask the question, First, you scrutinize your teaching and learning as so doing a reflection first. Then ask questions, check the literature, design a study, collect data, implement and publish. So a typical sort of project will be like <coughs> term one, the preparation. You have research plan, you design the materials and then you pilot if it is the materials that you are going to be bringing into your classroom and you want to know whether that material will help to support certain activities, certain development of certain competencies, etc. then that's what you will do. Then you do the data collection and then you do the data analysis. 
where you clean your data, identify patterns and lesson learned, and finally you revise, you implement changes to the instruction and you may go another cycle. It looks like action research, that's what it, it is. But SOTO would also do that. So you may, you may not finish your study in one semester, you may continue to the next semester. But ideally, if you want to do it in one semester, you would have baseline data already of what this course was about before you embark on this uh, sort of research. Okay, some possible topics. Yeah, you mentioned active learning, assessment, we mentioned that, uh, assessment of curriculum and program, critical thinking, engagement, learning communities, community of inquiry, online learning, motivation, et cetera, et cetera, and many, many more, I'm sure. Uh, all you need to start is to start reading in the area that you are interested in and most likely in the literature related to uh, teaching in your particular discipline. There are many, many uh, literatures out there that, that talks about how to teach specific discipline. Some tips on effective social proposal. If you are taking this course because you would like to to bid for SOTO grant, uh, tell me, do you still have SOTO grant in ADEC right now? So anybody Can anybody answer me that question? Um, hi, Prof. Umu here. Hi, Umu. Hi. Uh, okay, uh, for this year, we did, uh, did not receive yet the funding, but we're very hopeful that somewhere um, in the mid of the year, we will receive it. So we can start like a few months before the semester. Right. Yeah. So when 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 the when EDEC advertised the sort of funding, you would have something already prepared to go for the and I'm sure EDEC will teach you how to to write the proposal. But this is some tips that effective sort of proposal should have. Okay. Thanks, Umuya. Um, so it should demonstrate the implementation of innovation in teaching and learning or active learning, or student engagement, or learning outcomes, student success, and student retention, depending on what is it that you want to showcase here. Include specific examples of what you plan to do. Establish clear need and rationale for that research. Support with pedagogy or research on teaching practice, either from, from the literature. Demonstrate how this goes beyond normal planning. It's not just like planning a lesson no, you are going to redesign your uh, course pretty much. I think that's what EDEC is looking for. You have to show that you are redes redesigning the course. Develop clear evaluation procedures that focuses on the scholarship of teaching and learning. So meaning here, what evidence are you going to collect and how are you going to collect that evidence? So that evidence becomes the evaluation procedures. If the procedure is... Maybe you want to collect before and after the intervention or you want to interview the students or you want them to write reflections or you want to have your field notes or all those things becomes very important or you want to observe. That's how you want to evaluate how students are uh, learning, etc. So those, those other things has to be made very clear and address each component in application with focus on the evaluation criteria. Evaluation criteria becomes very, very important because we want to know how do you know that your intervention is helping the students to learn, okay? And successful SOTO will allow the scholar teachers to examine personal pedagogical beliefs and approaches. So this is where your teaching philosophy comes in because you may, your philosophy maybe will, <coughs> will showcase what is it that you believe in student learning, what you value in student learning, and how you practice what you value and what you believe. And always remember that you as a teacher is always a learner. You will always continuously be learning about new things. As I said, I've been teaching like, oh, it's going to be 40 years this year, 1982, that's what Dr. Zahir said. Uh, so it'll be 40 years this May. So I've taught for 40 years and yet I am still learning every day. It's just like something new for me every time. Teacher as designer, because you are going to be redesigning your 
your course, every time you teach it, it's always something new. Make sure it is always something new, then it'd be exciting. But if you are still, if you're just using the same old, same old, same old method, then you will not be excited about it and the students are not going to be excited. And teacher as a researcher, always remember that you are a researcher and you are bringing your research into your classroom, your teaching, Whatever that you're researching in your discipline will become new knowledge for your students and you're going to teach it to your students and you're going to teach your students to, to do inquiry also, some teaching methods and you expose them to the research in your discipline and you also probably want them to do a research and you are also researching on your teaching at the same time. Okay, so this is a... If you, if you have heard the word before, this is the research teaching nexus. So I think that is also in the uh, MQA somewhere, how we have to show evidence that we are bringing research into our undergraduate teaching. And of course, at postgraduate teaching, we, we expect, at the undergraduate, we are expected to introduce our students to research and to bring research and uh, etc. Oops, I got a message here. My internet connection is not stable. I hope it will stay stable. Okay, it requires scholar teachers to conduct a thorough instructional design process. See, teacher as designer critically evaluate their work. So if you feel that your instructional design is still uh, not quite uh, there yet, and I'm sure EDEC has many uh, training that you can take to make sure that your instructional design is uh, good, right? So allow the development of meaningful and efficient learning. We have to provide scaffolding that allows room for independence and creativity through coaching and mentoring, whether uh, it is coaching and mentoring your students or maybe coaching and mentoring your peers. That's very important. As I said, that's why it's very important to have that community that can uh, help you and mentor you, coach you, provide scaffolding, etc. So provide support for professional growth with SOTA. And I know ADEC is doing this, doing a good job at supporting your SOTA growth. Okay. So any question before we move to, to the next level? So we have another half an hour. Okay. So we are going back to the Padlet. So this is where you are going to do your total work. So you may, you may do this as a group or you may do this individually. So as I said here, you may start by asking question, what is it that you want to learn more about your teaching? It, it's good to, to pen this down and to, to share it with someone else. Okay, so, so in fact, we... Oh my goodness, so we are already running late, but that's okay. As I said, this is something that I'm going to leave for you to, to do, You maybe um, for you to soak in what is total actually, what am I getting myself into, but, but I, let, let me give you just uh, 20, maybe, oh my God, 15 minutes. It's not much time, right? 15 minutes to just uh, think through this uh, question and maybe some of you would like to share and give feedback and you, I would also would like you to um, to do your reflection later. You can you can write about what you have learned today and what you have questioned, and also uh, give feedback to for me to improve my session. Okay, so over to you. So I'm gonna leave you for fifteen minutes. Okay, so, and, and Umi, um, okay, let, let, let me give you my email if you, you want to send me your, your plan, maybe you want me to take a look at it, 
I'll be very happy to, to give you the feedback and to support you. Okay, so that's my email on the chat. So that's something that you can plan to do. So I know this is a, three hours is never enough to, to talk about SOTL and this is just touching the surface and to really go deep into doing SOTL, you have to go away and come back and, and talk about what you, you are thinking. All right, so let me leave you for, for a while. Umi, is it okay if we just take like 10 minutes more after that? Well, welcome back, everyone. So I hope you have um, enough time to, to just reflect on what is it that you would like to do I mean, after this workshop. Because I, as I said, uh, doing total takes time. You cannot just uh, within 10 minutes come up with something, a uh, total plan. But I would like to, uh, for you to, if you, if you have a plan and you would like to, to share with me and we can continue this conversation on email. And, but for, for now, I'm sure some of you would have some thoughts already on what is it that you would like to change and maybe you would like to answer the questions that we, um, that I, that I post here on the Padlet. And maybe if I can just hear from a few, then perhaps then we can, uh, we can let you go <laughs> and you can share your reflection with me and you have a reflection here and this is for you to, to share with me later. Uh, so, uh, Prof, for, yeah. so to, to sum up, uh, no, no, I just want to give a last uh, feedback. Um, firstly, I want to say a uh, thousand of thanks to Prof for all really? the very really impressive... <laughs> very impressed and a lot of advance for me. Uh, for, for all the models and instructional that you give to us. But what I want to share, or maybe you can give some feedback from all the sort of, um, uh, I think it's about very important, one of the important things also about student learning time. But right. uh, maybe, maybe you can give um, feedback or opinion about not just in school or undergraduate student for SLT, but also in postgrad student like me. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> for postgrad student, I think it's so uh, uh, com <laughs> how complicated to say about student learning time. But I know that okay. maybe yes. for uh, overall from school and. Uh, graduate student. Thank you. Oh my goodness. I, uh, Joe, I'm, I'm, I, it's very hard for me to give the answer to that question because wherever I, where I am right now, we don't have such a thing as student learning time. And I know Malaysian yeah. universities have student learning yeah, time. Some, I, actually, it's measured in a very, 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 uh, yeah, very hard, right? But before this, uh, uh, I just want to share what uh, I don't, I don't know actually what is student learning time actually. But uh, until I uh, uh, exposure by my uh, leader in my department about student learning and very specific to learn about that, I'm very confused how I can apply the sorter uh, and student learning time is very hard because you don't know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. um, the student learning time is not something that you do in the sense that what you, what you can change with sorter work is how you teach. Okay, and the activities that you design and the assignment that you design for your students to accommodate all those other things, policies or whatever, because student learning time becomes a policy, right? So which the students have to adhere to or rather we have to adhere to when we plan our courses so that we take into consideration students' learning time, like if one credit equals to what, 40 hours, if, you know, all those things. I remember that was a long time ago for me to to think about that. So I don't know if there's anything new in that area. Yeah. Thank you, Prof. But uh, last but not least, I just want to thank that what I learned today 
uh, mm -hmm. how to make my student easy to understand the contents of teaching and how to make them happy for our subject. So thank you so much. You have to keep searching what's the best way to, to engage your students and make them happy with you. Yeah, thank you. Anyone else would like to, to have a last word or to share your, your thoughts of, about your plan? Okay. This is a good opportunity. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, thank you very much for the time. Uh, I would like to say thank you very much for the knowledge. Alhamdulillah. Uh, I feel a lot of things that we can learn. Uh, we do believe that one difficult cannot be many convenience, inshallah. Thank you very much, Professor Raja Masna. You are welcome. The opportunity. Right. Thank you. Uh, okay, I'm going to stop sharing so that we can, yeah. Right. Who else have something to say? I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, it could be your plan or it could be you just want to tell me what, whether you have learned something today or any other question that is raised from this uh, conversation with me today. Right, if we can go through, everyone. Shall I? Uh, okay, maybe what I, who I see on my screen now next is Vino. Vino, you have something to, you would like to Hi, say? Hi. Yeah, um, regarding the sort of challenges and all that, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I actually posted something in the Padlet just now. Um, so what I want to learn more about my teaching is I know that all of us have different kind of pedagogy that we apply, teaching different content, and it changes, especially when you're using technology, right? So Absolutely. um, my concern is especially when I'm going to teach some difficult content for the students. When I say difficult content, is students find it difficult to comprehend. Like in my my in my situation, I'm teaching education philosophy, research methodology. So all these mm. topics, are students student find it very difficult. Uh, number one is because of the language barrier, uh, because mm. we have a lot of students from China and English being the medium of communication in the class and make it very difficult for them to comprehend uh, or synthesize uh, you know, information. So that's number one. So I'm trying my level best to really articulate uh, my content to be in a very simpler way so that they're able to understand the concepts first mm. uh, and then talk about the application part. So I um, find it very I find it very challenging in this area. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying every semester to see how I can improvise this because I'm going to get the same set of students every semester. Uh, if I'm lucky, okay. I probably will get better students in terms of the language, like language proficiency. Yeah, I think that's yeah, my... Do my... That. I do that too, all the time. <laughs> we get better students with better language. But Yes, um, probably you yeah, could relate yeah. better uh, what, I, what I'm trying, what I'm, I'm, I'm facing, I believe, uh, unless you are in a, in a, in a, in a mm. you know, better, uh, uh, your students are able to understand English very well and then things get more easier, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> But yeah. yeah, so it, because when when we're talking about like for example like education philosophy, right? When I want to go more detail with them, it's very very difficult for for me to talk with them in more detail because I expect them to debate, to argue, to synthesize, not just agree with me hundred percent that there's no fun in learning, right? They have the vocabulary to to express themselves so in English. I mean, I I struggle with that also with my students. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but so I think that's the part that I'm trying to see what I can improvise more, right? Mm -hmm. So I think right. the things that I would like to continue doing is when come to my assessment, I think it's it's been designed in a in a way that uh, my students are able to apply it in 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 uh, whenever whenever they leave the class or they go out there, for example, there there is an application uh, embedded with 21st century skill, you know, and all that. Um, mm -hmm. So probably I will continue doing that. Uh, something that I think that I will I will start doing is I do give feedback to students, right? Mm -hmm. But I think uh, the problem happened is the way that I'm giving feedback. 
So probably right. I might need to apply this concept called sandwich feedback. You know, letting them know what they have done very well, <laughs> rather very than good. directly jumping and telling them what they haven't done it well. Right. So, but I think it's being a human being. Every time I see the assignments, I I just feel like it. I get very upset <laughs> seeing that doing this <laughs> right you get upset <laughs> yeah so immediately you know my attention divert rather than giving them the positive comment first right is totally moving me to it like i just want to shoot them with that why you didn't do this why why you missed this you, you, you didn't watch my lesson you know i'm tend to do that so i think i'm going to yeah. start to doing that kind of thing yeah good topic to work on In mm. fact, I mean, you you can if you can find someone else who's also interested in working with you in the area of giving feedback. I think then you'll have a good team because then you will look at how that person gives feedback and how you give feedback, and mm. you can collab. Yeah, yeah. I think it's very important, uh, especially when the feedback. Uh, if it's an, it's especially you know, um, talking about formative assessment. Yes, students continuously get feedback from us. But when it comes mm. to the summative assessment, right, that's the main part that when students don't really get feedback, you know, because at the end of it and they don't know how they've been performing, how does that information help them to progress in the next semester, you know, all these things happen, right? So these are the, some, some things that I've been looking at so far. Yeah, this is what I want to share with you, Prof. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Um, Isa, do you have something to, to share with us? Um. Definitely eye-opener. I think uh, we are used to do uh, teaching, I think, very conventional. We try to uh, uh, try to keep pace with the technology and, and uh, anything new that we need to include in our teaching method. And I think, yeah, um, thank you, Prof. I think <laughs> this is very, I mean, it's new to me. I, I'm not sure whether... The rest have heard it before, but it's new to me. And, I mean, and thank you very much, Prof. Keep thinking and keep exploring. Very important. All right. Thank you, Isa. How about Yap? You have something to say, Yap? Okay. How about AHJ? I don't know who you are. <laughs> are you still there? AHJ? Not there. Rosaida, are you there? Okay, no news, good news, right? Um, okay, Ros Rosaida, thanks, Prof. Hoping to delve further into this, inshallah, agree with sentiments uh, by we know we are human after all. Thank you. Uh, Joe, Joairia. I hope you don't mind me calling you Ju. I just keep saying Ju. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm uh, um, I'm looking forward to discuss more, maybe, <laughs> with you, okay. uh, Prof. No Shall problem. Thank you. Katie, are you there? Nope, Katie not there. Nor Hashima. Okay, Azura. No, uh, Normalina, okay, all right, um, well, this is my, I suppose we, we can wrap up the session for today and it has been a pleasure for me to, to meet you and to share with you a little bit about Soto, not too deep. It's a just very light conversation that we have today. And I hope that you will explore further. I mean, there are so many uh, websites and so many papers on Soto, so many webinars. So many. It's just a matter of whether you want to do it or you don't want to do it, whether you want to learn or, or not. Okay, so, oh, yeah, okay, no microphone. Oh, okay, no problem. Thank you so much. And, yeah, I hope you will uh, continue to move towards SOTO. And this is not something to scare everyone. I'm sure you, you attend this session today because you are curious, because you want to learn more. So you want to be a teacher, researcher. So you, yeah, 
So good. So this is a good start. And uh, please do not hesitate to email me or send me a message or whatever, however. And and please keep keep uh, using the Padlet if it is useful for you. And if if not, then it's fine. So thank you, Noor, Malina. Thank you. All right, with that, um, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you very much for, for being here with me today. And it has been a pleasure. And with that, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, bro.